All right, guys, how's it going out there? Rooster in 10, roostercb.com. And this is going to be episode three of our blacklisted radio equipment series of videos. And in these videos, I'll cover radio equipment that I think you guys should probably avoid out there for one reason or another. It could be because it underperforms, doesn't perform. There's way better options. Maybe it's something that's prone to failure or gives trouble. Um, or again, it could just be something that's flat out snake oil or something that doesn't work as advertised or works less than advertised. Okay. Nothing's really off limits. Um, antennas, amplifiers, radios, microphones, uh, any kind of accessory you can think of that falls into this category, I will uh, try to cover. And again, it'll it'll mainly be stuff that I see come up all the time. You know, there's no need me digging back in history and finding some antenna that nobody's even heard of and, and telling you guys, hey, this is a bad antenna. It was never good. Doesn't really matter. It's not really relevant because it's not really out there for people to buy anymore. So we'll try to keep it to stuff that's actually still floating around today whether that be new equipment or used equipment. And really, let's just jump right into this. Excuse me. And uh, for what we're about to talk about here, I'm not necessarily throwing off on the manufacturer or the builder in his or their entirety. It's mainly one product that they sell that I want to talk about. And with that said, let's take a look at the Stargun Mobile CB Antenna. And we're actually going to go to this builder manufacturer's website if my internet will speed up. All right, here we go. So you got Stargun. This is their website. If not made in Mississippi, don't buy it. Okay, so obviously they're made in Mississippi. Here's their contact information. Uh, over 50 years of research development has gone into various stages of Stargun antennas. I offer the first portable beam of the 20th century along with the Jammer series. There is absolutely no antenna made. They'll extend the operating ranges the Stargun offers. I'm confident that the Stargun antenna will enhance your system by magnitude unexpected. We offer a lifetime warranty. We're proud to say Stargun antenna is made in Mississippi in the USA. All right. So let's just talk about this a little bit, this whole introductory statement. And here's what I really want to hone in on. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? The, the first portable beam of the 20th century. I want you guys to think about that. Because we're going to come back to that here in a second. No antenna made that will extend the operating ranges the Stargun offers. Again, that's just an attention-grabbing statement to people that have no experience in the hobby. And they're automatically going to gravitate to that. Because they think, well, he said it's the best. It must be the best. So I'm going to buy it. Well, enhance your system by a magnitude unexpected. Well, I'll tell you. I might, not, I might not disagree with that, because if you're expecting one of these beam antennas to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, uh, you're definitely going to be enhanced in a way that you did not expect. Uh, and it's not going to be like a beam antenna. But let's, uh, let's get into it here. And again, I want to focus on this thing. So let's go over here to antennas, and we're going to go to mobile beams and take a look at these things. Oh, my God. All right, so we got a super trucker here that's got dual stacks. He's got a stacked mobile beam over here side by side, and he's got a stacked mobile beam over here. So he's he's really loaded up here. All right, I don't know if you guys can see these pictures here. We'll try to blow some of these up and look at them. Okay, this antenna is a star-shaped antenna, like a Joe Gun or Gizmochi. It's like a little miniature version. Same thing with this one. Looks like a Joe Gunner Gizmachi miniature version. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I'm in disbelief. I mean, I see these things get posted all the time. Okay, so this one's like a flat side antenna with a coil and then a stinger up going above the top here. I guess it doesn't know if it wants to be a flat side antenna or a, a vertical Another one of these gizmachi looking things. This guy's got one on his tow truck. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to talk about this a little bit, and I'm not, you know, super antenna guru. I don't know everything there is to know about antennas. Still doing a lot of experimenting and a lot of learning myself. But I'm going to give you guys some basic, basic, basic antenna theory on how a beam antenna works. Okay, so on a beam antenna, you've got your reflector, which is going to be your last element. I was going to see if I could pull one of these up and kind of give you a visual example. Your reflector is going to be your last or your back element of the, of the beam. And then your driven element is essentially where your coax is going to hook up at or your gamma match is going to be. And then all the elements following that are called directors. Okay. And generally the way a beam antenna works, here we go. I'll pull this up. Generally, the way a beam antenna works is they taper as you go forward. Your reflector or your back door, back end side of the antenna is going to be the longest. Usually, you know, close to 18 feet total, give or take. And then you have your driven here, and that's where your coax will either hook up, your hairpin, your gamma match, whatever. And then you have a uh, your director here, which the the driven and the first director are typically the closest. And then they taper as you go. They, you know, the lengths, the, the spacing will be, you know, whatever. Maybe a little, it'll gradually go up as you, you go down the antenna. And your lengths of your antenna, lengths of your elements will taper down. So this one will be the longest. This back one, a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. You may have some that are very close to the same length, but that's generally the way it works, okay? So here's the deal with these mobile beam antennas. The spacing in between the elements is key as well. I think I mentioned that, but the spacing in between the length elements. There is no way, guys, no way that these little things that look like a beam actually work like a beam. Okay, for one, the feed point orientation or where the coax hooks up, how the feed point is oriented you know, is going to determine whether this antenna transmits vertically or horizontally. Now, he's claiming that this is like a horizontal flat side beam antenna, and it's not. This is no more a beam than a model airplane is an actual airplane. Okay, just because it looks like one doesn't make it work like one. I've seen damn model airplanes that look just like a real airplane but they ain't gonna take off and fly and this thing right here same way it ain't gonna fly now will it talk oh I'm certain that this antenna or all these other crazy looking antennas will talk there's not a doubt in my mind there's too much aluminum here for it not to talk but will it outperform you know say a well-made coil antenna or you know something you know, a Predator 10K or a whatever, Black Al Capone, Fat Boy. The list goes on. Will it outperform one of them? I wouldn't be so sure about it. There's a lot of extra bull crap going on here to snake oil somebody into buying it, okay? I mean, look at the elements. Do you think that this thing is going to perform? You know, it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So five elements on this thing that looks like it might be a couple of feet long. You think this is going to perform anywhere, anything like what an actual five element beam is going to? An actual five element beam that's 25, 26 feet long in length? No, it's not. Again, the feed point isn't right for this to transmit horizontally. And just because it looks like a beam doesn't make it one. Okay. You can't take what would normally be a, a 26 foot long antenna and squish it down to a couple of feet and say, well, it looks like that antenna, so it's got to talk like that antenna. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Now, what I will say, if you want to see what an actual mobile beam looks like, and he's got a decent example of one on here. Uh, Well, I said he did. Where the heck did it go? 
I was on here browsing not long ago and I saw it. He has Suburban on here that had had some antennas on it. Let's see, trucks. Oh, okay, here it is. I, I remember where it's at. It's under this. Okay. All right, so let's pull this one up. Now, you guys have probably seen something like this that go the key downs or have even kept up with the key downs, familiar with them. This is more along the lines of like a mobile beam, okay? So usually you'll see it with just two when people are riding around, and it acts like a beam. It's, it's called a bounce back uh, system. So your back antenna is essentially a reflector, and then this one um, is going to be your hot antenna on a two antenna system. And it's going to transmit heavy towards the front. Okay, this antenna will typically be shorter. This one will be longer and it'll transmit towards the front. Now, again, this is a four antenna array and it's kind of, I don't really know how well this one works because it looks like the antennas aren't lengthed properly. They're not really tapering or anything. So how well this one works, I don't know. But this is the same kind of principle. Uh, you know, you'll see this at like the key downs and that's what those guys, the key downs are doing. That's how they get all that gain. And that's, you know, at the key downs, not to get too, too far off subject, but you know, a lot of people get wrapped up in who built the amp that won at the key down. It really comes down to these antenna systems. Uh, whoever's got the best antenna system, you know, the Watts do have a lot to do with it, but whoever's got the best antenna system typically wins and they'll build these arrays that are, you know, four elements, five elements, whatever. And uh, that's essentially a mobile beam. Um, and they have similar spacing to what a beam ran on the base station would do. Okay, so that's my little spiel on these. You know, I, do I think this guy makes some good antennas? I think some of his antennas are probably, are probably working pretty well. Uh, I don't think that all of his antennas are, are necessarily snake oil. I mean, like this is probably not a bad antenna. I don't know about the extra... I mean, this seems kind of redundant with the, you've got ground radials below the coil and then ground radials above the coil. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but I would say that this is probably a decent talking antenna and some of his other ones um, are probably okay as well. What's this Omni horizontal? Okay, so I guess what he's saying with this one is it talks horizontally, but it talks in every direction horizontally. There's only one antenna that I know that does that, that truly does that, and it's called a turnstile antenna, and I don't know of any manufacturer that's making one. I think Joe Gun might make a base antenna that kind of models after a turnstile antenna, but again... I've seen these and I'm going to say something else. You know, he's not the only one that does this. You know, uh, I love the Al Capone antennas. I think he makes the best coil antenna ever made. But he also makes a top that goes on his coil antennas, calls it a T-top or a flat side. And it essentially screws into the top. And, you know, the claim is that it talks on the flat side. Well, we've had them here. They don't talk on the flat side. They talk vertical just as if the whip was sticking up and down. So this, this thing right here, this ain't going to talk flat. This is not going to talk horizontal polarity. All right, that's it, guys. Avoid these. You know, he does make some good antennas, I'm sure. I don't have any personal experience with them. But just knowing, you know, you don't have to have owned one of these to know it's not going to work. I don't care what anybody says. People can tell you that they've had these and they talk like a million bucks. You know, that's because they probably never ran anything else and they thought that was the best thing out there. Just because it looks like a beam does not make it a beam. Okay, this mobile beam nonsense, this is bull crap. Okay, it should be mobile antennas that look like beams. Or beam lookalikes is what he should have called this. But calling it a mobile beam gives people the false sense that this thing is going to transmit and operate like a beam. Okay, it's not. All right, end of story. Rooster in 10, roosterCB.com. See you, bye.